Welcome to Church Spotlight. This week we highlight Freedom Christian Fellowship Church located on Highway 613 in Moss Point, Mississippi. And today we are joined by their pastor, Dean Smith. Thank you and welcome to Church Spotlight. Thank you, Rena. It's really good to be with you today. Let's start at the beginning of the church, the birth of the church, when and where. Okay. Uh, the church originally was founded about uh, eight to nine years ago by a pastor who was bivocational. He was in the military. His name's Derek Boring. And uh, a small group of people began meeting in a home and eventually organized as a church. Um, he was transferred uh, because of his uh, work, and I came on board with the church about five years ago. Wow. So fairly new church, eight to nine years old, and you've been here five years. So tell me what you walked into. Well, I, it's been a small congregation, probably about 30 people when I came on board. And we began doing some foundational things initially, and we're really laying that foundation to be able to build on that. And then Katrina hit. And because of that, we lost the building that we were meeting in uh, for about nine months. We floundered around with a meeting place because everything was taken. Right. You know, we met in a dance studio. We met in uh, in a community center. We met in homes at some times. And uh, the Lord led us to buy this building where we are. We converted it into a church building. And uh, nine months after the storm, the back was complete. So we began meeting back there. And it wasn't until about a year and a half later that the rest of the building was completed and we were able to move into the sanctuary. And all. Sounds like a tenacious group of people. We've had a lot of people who've invested a lot and uh, not only time, money, but just themselves, you know. Right. And they've been a blessing. Not right. only people in the church, but outside the church as well. Well, Katrina was such a um, landmark Mm -hmm. to Gulf, the Gulf Coast and not only were places of business, businesses affected, but people's homes were mm -hmm. affected. So, you know, the lives of your congregation were probably also in turmoil and the fact that they would continue to right. work and be diligent to find a place to worship speaks a lot of the congregation. And it did, you know, it all, it changed all of our lives. But I think that one thing that it did for the community of Christ is that it really solidified our need to be the body of Christ and worship together and depend on each other. Right, right. Did you have any outside help with the facility? We did. We would not be here today, I don't think, had we not had outside help. We had, like so many stories go, we had people from Canada, uh, Hawaii, uh, all over the United States to come and help. And really, one thing that blessed me was at that time, denomination wasn't really important. Um, True. Nobody cared about the dom denominational barriers, and it was a good time, you know, even though it was difficult. Right, right. Well, you can look around at your beautiful sanctuary and see where God's brought you. Yeah, He has, and we're, we're in constant gratitude to Him for this. Uh, the building is not the church, but it's good to have a place for the church to meet. Sure. And I think Katrina, even though it displaced so much, it also um, lets you know where you belong. You know, um, because of losing things, stuff, locations, you know, things like that. You know, you still, to have a place of belonging and to have a beautiful sanctuary to come, I think that's, yeah. that's important. In those times of desperation and difficulty and hardship, they really solidify some things in us. They help, they call us back to what's really important. And um, I think we see the best of people in those situations, which we did. And uh, it's always good to be able to have that as a marker to be able to fall back on. You know? Sure, sure. So what is the congregation like now? Um, our church is, I think, different than most churches. Uh, this church was founded, the, the founding pastor uh, Pastor Boring had a heart to reach people that wouldn't fit in most churches. Maybe they had been through some very difficult things in their life and just a lot of dysfunction maybe. And it was a good fit when I came because that's my heart too. And our church, the congregation, is basically people who 
have been unchurched, maybe they've been hurt by the church, maybe they don't fit in you know, the traditional church. Right. And we, we fight really hard to uh, be non-traditional, not departing, of course, from the Word of God and from you know, the truth. But there's a lot of baggage that a lot of times the traditional church has that uh, we try, we, we fight not to have that so that people can come and meet God without having all the encumbrances get in the way. Where they're just simply welcome. Right. And feel loved. Right. Right. And they f have a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. And acceptance. People need to know they're accepted. Um, so often we, we're not good like God at differentiating between the outward appearance and the inward heart. And um, so many people have been judged for the outward appearance. Um, I hope that this place is a place that people can, uh, can be seen for their heart. If you could sum up in one sentence your body of believers here, what would it be? We're here for the hurting, for those that have been wounded in life, for those who really just struggle in different aspects of their life. One of the key verses that we focus on a lot of times is the verse in Proverbs where it says that the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a wounded spirit? And there are many people who have wounded spirits. It goes deeper than physical, and many times even deeper than emotional. The core of their being has been wounded. Mm -hmm. And we focus on helping a person heal in their woundedness. A place for healing. I love that. We're going to talk more about your ministry here and your other aspects of ministry here at Freedom Christian Fellowship. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Church Spotlight. Today we're joined by Pastor Dean Smith of Freedom Christian Fellowship. Thanks again for having us. And let's talk about the ministries, the other areas of ministry that you have here at the church. Okay. I think like most churches, we try to accommodate the whole family. Um, we do have children's ministries, uh, youth ministries. We put a lot of focus on discipleship. So... Uh, seeking to raise people from infancy in Christ into maturity and then leadership. Um, so we, you know, pretty much run the whole gamut like uh, most churches would try to. So when you, when you say you want to talk about um, di forming discipleship, mm -hmm. what do you do? One of the most important things that we do are small groups. We have uh, what some people will know as cell groups and they meet either in the homes or at the church building as small group discipleship ministries throughout the week. And uh, we really place a whole lot of emphasis on those. Um, so many times in a church, you find yourself, your church experience being, you know, looking at the back of the head of the person in front of you. And so we try to engage our people. Uh, people grow in relationship or they're, problem areas come out in relationship and that's a good thing a lot of times people stay withdrawn because they know that if they get close to a person there's going to be problems all those problems are good things I, I view them as a positive because then you're able to work on the areas that God wants to grow in you mm -hmm. otherwise you stay in your shell and never go through the process of experiencing spiritual growth Never grow. That's right. So do you meet in homes or do you meet here at the building? Both. Both. We do have uh, groups that meet in both. And uh, we try to get in the homes because that's very important. A lot of people will come to a, the home before they'll come to church. And we found in the past that that's a really good way to do evangelism. Uh, but, you know, everybody's busy nowadays. And people's lives are packed pretty full. So sometimes it's hard to find enough homes to meet in. And, you know, that's, that's okay. We understand. People are busy in life. And we try to meet people where they are, not make demands of them that uh, really may be unrealistic for their lifestyle. Right. Well, maybe you could do a rundown of what nights and your women's ministry meets or mm -hmm. men's ministry so that our viewers would know. Okay. We are, um, right now, our ladies are taking a little break. Um, expect them to start back up. They usually meet on Monday nights 
and uh, we had two of those that met, but right now they're both breaking. Uh, when, third, Tuesday night, we uh, have our men's meeting, and uh, it meets at 6.30. We also have a group that is specifically pr for praise and worship. Uh, our praise team meets on Tuesday night as a small group ministry, but then also they you know, prepare for Sunday as well. Then on Wednesday night, our youth meet as a small group, a cell group. Uh, we do have our church service on Wednesday night with an intercessory prayer time starting at 6 o'clock and then our service at 7 o'clock. Um, then we have a leadership cell group that meets on Thursday nights at uh, 6 o'clock. And that's for those that really want to go further in their relationship with God and uh, be willing to take care of issues maybe that may keep them from being utilized in ministry. Do you have youth leaders? We do. We have, uh, the man's name is Bob Woods. He is one of our elders here at the church and a uh, wonderful man of God. Heart, just a tremendous heart for God and passionate. And he loves the youth and is doing a wonderful job with them. Kind of a prerequisite that they love youth. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly. But he's, uh, he's got a lot of wisdom and is very grounded, so he's got some good things to sow in our kids. That's great. How about Sunday morning? Do you, is that when the children's church meets? It is. Um, we do not have Sunday school. We really opt for the small groups rather than Sunday school. The children would get their Sunday school during our worship service. They stay in here for the praise and worship and then go into the back to children's church. Our service starts at 10 o'clock. We have a discipleship class that meets at uh, 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. I like that the children stay in for worship. I think it's important to, to be in the atmosphere of corporate worship and also see mom and dad worship. Yeah, well, that's important, very important. Um, I find that many of our churches, you know, our youth are very passionate. They have a lot of energy church many times to them is the boring the most boring time of the week I think we as maybe a little older adult generation we need to work hard to make church a place where the young people the children enjoy right. being a part and of it's what exciting God's doing. right right allow them to express who they are right instead of learning to sit like we do and fall asleep during the service you know right, right. Um, they, they have so much passion, and let's allow them to express that. Sure. And find ways to encourage that. Yeah. Sure. So your congregation right now, what your um, outreaches are, and you know, which are many, this is the sale, but tell me the, um, I guess maybe the, the study that y'all are doing, the, the work that God is doing right now mm -hmm. in the body. All right. It's going to take a little while so <laughs> but uh, the Lord has really changed our whole direction we, because we minister to so many hurting people we found that a lot of times the traditional approach isn't very effective and I'm not sure how effective the traditional church is to begin with or a traditional approach is to begin with um, there's a song that says all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. And unless we have the presence of God, we're going to go through a rote experience of religious activity that may cause some soothing to our conscience to say that we've been a part of a worship on Sunday morning, but we'll leave unchanged. Uh -huh. And so we are right now focused on the presence of the Lord. It really doesn't matter if we gather if the Lord's not with us, you know. It's true. And there's, some, there's a verse of scripture to back that up. Uh, the church of Laodicea, known as the lukewarm church, that verse in that says that Jesus stands at the door and knocks, and if anyone will open the door, he'll come in and sup with him. Well, we use that in witnessing to people. But Jesus is writing that to the church. There are many churches he's on the outside of the door wanting to come in. And I think that that typifies many times our worship. 
while we're gathering for a good purpose, are we really gathering in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ? Allowing Him to do what He wants to do. Yeah. And making sure that not only is the body welcome, but He is welcome. Exactly. Number one, that He is welcome. That's right. That's right. We're going to continue our conversation with Pastor Dean in the presence of God and the importance of that when we continue. Welcome back to Church Spotlight. Pastor Dean, it sounds as if you're changing the focus of worship here and your ministry here at Freedom. So explain that. I believe that things are going to change here. Um, we've, we've encountered sometimes and really I would say frustration because we've wanted to see people's lives changed. And a lot of the times we are dealing with people who've been very wounded and need a lot of help in their life. And I've come to the place that I realize that there's no substitute for the presence of God. David said that he'd rather spend one day in the presence of God than, you know, a thousand. A thousand. Elsewhere. Thank you. Um, and I believe that when we experience the presence of God, things change. Lives change. It's inevitable. It has to. And a lot of times, we in church life, I think, do experience a lot of uh, wasted time in our worship, in our church activities, because we're not really encouraging the tangible presence of God. Just going through the motions. We are. You know, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And the psalmist said that as a, a deer pants after the water brook, so my soul pants after you. And there should be a hunger in us to meet with God. You know, a lot of times we come to worship, but do we really have a desire mm -hmm. to experience God? Do we really have a hunger? I, uh, years ago, I was an associate pastor at a church, and I was just going through a difficult time in my life. And uh, I went to another minister and talked to him. And he said something to me that took me years to get a hold of and understand what it meant. He simply said, and then he walked away after he said it and left me hanging there. <laughs> but he said, Dean, you've been eating junk food rather than the real food. And what that meant to me over a period of time, we all have a God-made void. As Augustine said, they can only be filled by God. But very often we try to fill it with other things. And that's what I had done. I had really allowed some things in my life that had taken the place of God. And it was junk food. And I think that a lot of times when we gather for worship, our people are so full of their own thing that we can't even have room for God. There have been times when I've been really hungry in my life. And at those times, it didn't matter what I ate, whether it was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or whether it was a steak, it still tasted really good, right? True. If a person's hungry, they're going to enjoy what they eat. A lot of times we come to church and we're not hungry. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if a person is full, it doesn't matter what you set before them. It doesn't look enticing to them. And could it be that many times we in our churches, we come to church full and it doesn't matter how good the praise and worship is, it doesn't matter how good the message is, it really doesn't speak to us because we are full of the wrong thing. Right, of other things. Right. So we're really taking things back to the basics and that is to encourage and expect and put a demand on the presence of God in our midst. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when true healing, true change begins. That's right. That's right. And that's what we need, isn't it? Our world is in uh, sad shape. Yes. And many people who are looking for something real, they don't seem like they, in their perspective, find it in the church. So if we're, if the ones who know God are not experiencing His presence, then how can we really expect to, to help all those 
who are wanting to find God. Right. We have to be the salt of the earth. We do. And there's more, of course, than just praying a prayer and uh, putting your name on a church roll. We can experience God. Mm -hmm. I read in the Bible over and over and over again where people who really got desperate had an encounter with God. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that we in the Christian community could reach a point of desperation for God without having to go through circumstances that make us desperate. Maybe we could just get hungry for God. Maybe we could realize that there's more in this life that we've not yet tapped into in relationship with our relationship with God. Right. Maybe if we could learn more in the classroom and not on a field trip, because mm -hmm. usually a field trip is painful. You know, when you have yeah. to learn through the hard way, um, through life, whatever, you know. That's right. That's right. So God has a lot for us. And uh, it's only in His presence that uh, we're really going to find what we need. So I, I just, you know, if you have some in your audience, maybe they've been wounded or hurt by the church, and maybe they don't feel like they can ever fit again in the church, I, I would encourage them to come. And then there's others who um, you really know that there's more, and you're seeking more, you want more. I encourage you to come and help us as we pursue the presence of God together. Pastor Dean, it's been a joy to be here today. I think it's an awesome ministry. I think it's a very relevant, very needed ministry. And just as you've made an appeal to the audience, you know, I think that I can sense the welcoming spirit of the Lord on your life. And I'm sure that that's um, visible and, and can be seen by our, our viewership. And I just thank you for having us here today and letting us know that your church is here to offer ministering healing here at, at Freedom Christian Fellowship. Thank you. Thank there's, you. There's a reason we're called freedom. We believe in Christ's freedom. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching Church Spotlight. I'm Rena Danley. Until next time.